Two years, and we're here. What's going on, you guys? It's Hunter. Nice to see you guys again. On the part one of the Thunderstorm series finale showcase. I want to say thank you all to my community, to people that I went to school with. It means a lot supporting this show for the last seven to eight years. Now, we're going to make things kind of nice and sweet for everyone here that's watching right now. Um, and yeah, let's just dive right into this. So, as you may know, there are some kids graduating this year. Uh, I've talked to a couple kids that I work with and asked them, you know, you guys ready for college? You guys got a plan set and ready? You know, um, it's always nice to ask those questions to make sure that if you have a kid that's graduating this year, you always want to ask them, do they feel nervous? Do they feel ready to graduate? Do they have a plan after high school? You know, that sort of thing. It's always nice to ask your kid that because so that way they have a plan ready. They're all set to go and they're ready to begin their uh, next chapter in their lives. So note for kids as well that's watching that are graduating this year. I do want to make sure because if I don't see any some of you that graduate, I want to say congratulations on receiving your diploma. It feels great accomplishing something that you've been doing since from kindergarten to your senior year. And it is a big deal for you graduating this year. You've come such a long way from doing what it is that you love doing the most. When you do graduate during your ceremony, you will receive a few things. You will receive a diploma. You'll receive like a little half cent thing. I know some people, some schools and some graduating classes do it differently, but uh, um, after that, they'll give you a thing you could keep after the graduation is over, who got what scholarship for what exactly, and um, you'll see some things from the band director that you, that they played music for some students, stuff like that, so you'll get that as well. So make sure to hang on to that, because that is something worth keeping as well. And then, of course, uh, I think sometime in May, they usually do it around May or June, and they like to keep, you would want to keep a newspaper of your um, your your child for graduation, because it's you can always look, that, that kid of yours can always just look back in the newspaper that, hey, I graduated with this person, you know, that sort of thing. So, um. And again, I do want to say congratulations to the class of uh, 2024 for graduating this year. So, big round of applause for them. Um, let's go ahead and uh, talk some more here. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, some tragic things that happened that made us stop filmmaking for the last, I would say, what, during COVID and and probably a little bit of 2022 and 2023. So let, let, let's dive into that a little bit. So COVID was a scary time and I was very nervous of getting sick and trying to do filming and trying to get all this work done and trying to do my video game stuff that I like to have fun with. The whole world kind of had to change their entire routine and it was tough. It was very tough for everyone. And I do want to give my condolences to the people who did die during COVID. I'm very sorry for your guys' loss. And we miss him a lot. We really do. I definitely do miss my grandfather. Grandpa Rodetsky was, was a great grandfather to me. I'm very happy that I got to spend the time with him that I did before he passed. All right. I want to talk about our first person, another condolence I want to give out to. And that person is Chloe K. Gamps. Chloe K. Gamps was a friend of mine who I met through um, the hockey games that they played in Moose Lake during 2016. And when I first talked to Chloe, she, she was kind of nice. She was a nice friend. 
she we I I got shy of talk meeting her the first time. I remember that much. Um and I like the I don't remember what position she played, but I do loved watching her in the hockey games when I would always go there. And yeah. Um, a nice memory I had of her was, you know, I got to go to her graduation party on the Moose Lake Golf Course and got to meet most of her family. Me and her got to do, uh, got to play beanbags, cornhole. It was pretty fun. It was a nice, it was a nice day that day. And, you know, I'll always cherish that memory of Chloe forever. Always. And one more thing I'll cherish forever, too, that she... I'm so glad that I was able to buy this from her. And I didn't even know at the time. I was kind of scared. But I'm so happy that when she did reach out to me about this painting, I was glad to purchase from her. Because I do know that this would be a memory to cherish forever from her before she passed. Um, this is the most beautiful painting I've ever seen her make, besides the other ones she has made. The message that she wrote on here in the back of this, it says, Hunter, thanks for supporting me. Chloe K. Gamps, 19. And I know that on my pictures it says just Chloe, Chloe Gamps, 19, but um, that was her middle name. And Chloe was born in 2001, and she passed in 2023, and lost a battle to mental health and it's just, I was very, I was very sad. I didn't, at first while I was at work, I didn't, I didn't believe it. I didn't want to believe it, but it was, man. I just couldn't believe she was gone. And I do really miss her. I miss her a lot. And also another thing too, if you feel like, you know, you're feeling down in the dumps, you know, and if you feel like you're going through an emotional tough time, please, please do yourself a favor and reach out to someone. And, of course, on Chloe's behalf, if you feel like you're not doing well and, you know, and you're not going to be around along, please do make yourself answer a phone number. You do want to, um... If you do have any issues like that, and you're a kid and very young, if they have any issues of any kind like that, please feel free to seek help from the 988 Suicide and Crisis Line for anyone that's struggling out there, you know. So, and, and yeah. If you guys have any memories you want to share with me about Chloe, of, you know, from her friends, please share it. Go ahead and share it with me. That would be great. I would love to hear more stories about Chloe. And I want to say I'm sorry for your loss, Gans family. My heart breaks for you. Chloe was such an amazing artist and amazing friend. If it weren't for Michaela Ballinger, I would have never met her. I still thank her to this day for giving me the gift to meet such amazing friends from hockey, from, from track, and cross country. Once this go out to the Gans family. So if you want to give your condolences, please feel free to do so on uh, remembering Chloe K. Gams. This one's going to hurt me a lot, big time. This next condolence one. This kid's name is Chad Beal. I didn't know much about Chad, but as soon as I went to the friend visitation for Chloe, um, Chad's dad got to tell me a lot about Chad. And um, I was shocked about, I mean, during COVID, or not, well, not COVID, no, but, uh, when I heard that they had a house fire, I was like, no way. 
Man. I And then he didn't make it out alive, and he had autism? That, man. That hit me big time. And with a boy that had autism, similar to me, it just, that broke my heart big time. But there is one thing that I will always cherish about Chad is that his dad would tell me such a one of the most best memories that he had with him. And and the parts about he loved to do filmmaking. My family would uh of course would like to Give my condolences on my behalf and my parents to the Beale family as they've been through so much these past couple of years, maybe more. House fire and then Dara with her heart surgery. Man, that was scary. I I would pray each day that Dara would get through her surgeries. But let's go back to Chad now. Chad was such an amazing kid. I seen him a few times when I would go to church every Wednesday. Um, his mom and his dad loved Chad. His two sisters loved him a lot. Even his, everyone in his family loved him. And so will I. I will love him too. And because I love that his passion for filmmaking and having the same disability as I do, that was the best thing I've ever heard. That, that story was probably like one of my favorite things about Chad. My condolences go out to the Beale family. Rest in peace, Chad. Chad was born on July 25th, 2007, and he died in the house fire in June 20th of 2022. Again, my condolences go to the Beale family. You guys have been for so much. I love you guys. And again, I will be praying for your family. And one more thing before... We get to the exciting stuff. My heart and my condolences go out to the people that were passing away through 2018 to 2024. I'm sorry for your guys' loss. Moment of silence, please, while we bow our head in silence for those who passed. Thank you guys for listening in. We will now begin the most exciting parts, the questions. Hunter, what made you start doing all this video stuff? I did it because I had, I was like, at first I didn't know where this was gonna go at first. I didn't know how this was all gonna start. I. It kind of, the whole, um, like, it started with running. Let's just say with that. I used to run around the halls a lot. Two of my teachers would say, Yo, you're Hunter. You're really good at running. Have you ever thought about signing up for track? <laughs> I remember that. I remember that story. But with that and watching the DC superhero, The Flash, and inspired me to become a filmmaker and create my own type of videos from my imagination. And when I was a kid, I'd always create wonderful things from Legos when I was a kid. And Lego always was a great way to just build things and kind of just have your own imagination. And that's what I kind of did. I every Every time when I was coming up with a new season for Thunderstorm, 
I would go in my room, play with my Legos, and kind of just uh, build up ideas, what I could build for a, a, a series, which was, it was craziness, it was fantastic. If you have a passion for filmmaking like I do, such as our um, friend I was talking about earlier, Chad Beal, if you have a passion for filmmaking, please start soon. It is the best moment that you will ever do. It is so fun. You get to kind of take the reins and choose where you want to go with your own videos. You get to, you know, kind of, if you want to go with superhero, you can go with vlogging, you can go with uh, recording just nature, whatever it is, share it. You never know when it might be. It, it might be something cool, it might be something eventful, something to remember, or just something that may ask a lot of questions, you know? And I'm glad I got to film this series for seven to eight years. Plus, I also want to thank to uh, my cousin Saul Myrie for recording a lot of my stuff back in high school. I do appreciate that, bud. Um, and to anyone else who helped out during the Thunderstorm series, I want to thank the Hockey Association, Moose Lake. I want to thank the uh, Barnum High School as well for inspiring me to make this story for the last seven to eight years. And I just want to say thank you all for supporting it for the last seven, eight, year, eight years again. This is part one of the final showcase, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys for part two of the showcase in April. And if not April, stay up to date on the Facebook page and my own personal page if you want. And yeah, let's go ahead everyone and show you guys what I've been working on for the series finale of Thunderstorm Season 2. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys again soon. Thank you.